So let's talk about some common mistakes that happen when we're doing conditioning for wrestling. Some of this might be repetitive from my old videos and some of it might be new things, but hear me out here, you just have to discuss this. It's just that important and it's good to repeat some things sometimes. Number one is not sticking to the metabolic demands of wrestling. You see, wrestling is primarily an anaerobic sport. Anaerobic means without oxygen. We have the aerobic energy system and aerobic energy system. When the demand of the activity is so high, your body simply doesn't have time to provide the muscles with oxygen. It needs to rely on other fuel sources like glucose and creatine phosphate. You can learn more about this by studying the phenomenon glycolysis, but we're not going to go too much into those scientific terms. I want to make this simple. So resting, you know, it's six minute rounds, okay? Two, three minutes rounds with 30 seconds rest. I mean, 30 seconds is not that significant, so let's just say six minutes. We're talking about freestyle resting here. And that is kind of an awkward time frame because it neither leans too much towards the aerobic frame and not too much towards the anaerobic but i would say it's more towards the anaerobic than the aerobic that is why we have to train this way as well when you're doing a steady state workout let's say 60 minutes low effort running on a treadmill or some cross-country type of training this type of intensity is not even comparable to a wrestling match you are never going to wrestle in this low effort. A wrestling match is very intense. I mean, you're not allowed to rest because you're, the referee will blow his whistle and tell you to get your shit together if you're remaining passive. You have to be active all the time, both of you, you and your opponent, for rounds of three minutes with 30 seconds rest between. Three minutes straight of just grueling wrestling, lifting, pushing, doing all of those things. Lactic acid will build up in your arms, your legs, you will experience cramps sometimes. All of this needs to happen in your training when you're preparing for a wrestling match. If you're not experiencing the same type of fatigue in your training that you do in a wrestling match, none of your training is not going to matter when you step into the wrestling mat. I've seen during the off-season a lot of athletes like going over to cross-country type of training like low efforts, marathon running, 60 minutes just low steady state running. They think they are, they think they are doing themselves a favor like, oh, I'm going to be so prepared when I start to wrestle. Then they start to wrestle again and they immediately get tired because they have been training the wrong energy system. And to be fair... A lot of this has to be contributed to the coaches, I would say. A lot of wrestling coaches, of course, they are competent in the wrestling game itself, but I mean, when it comes to, when it comes to the physiology part itself, like the sports science, this is a relatively unknown area in many wrestling clubs. They are traditionalists, and like they have seen, like they're, they're, it's just a matter of tradition that you have to do those cross-country type of runnings, run 60 minutes straight like it's some Rocky movie or something. That's going to make you a better wrestler. But I mean, science has proven different. I mean, if you look at the American style of wrestling today, the Americans, Kyle Dake and Snyder, Jaden Cox, all of those guys, they have, their coaches, they have taught them like the recent scientific advances when it comes to strength training. Those guys, they prioritize anaerobic endurance, power training, strength training a lot, and it's very evident in the wrestling matches. And recently they have even found success against the Russians, the legendary Russians, like, because of this style of training, I believe. They are really starting to take this very seriously, and I believe most other wrestling cultures need to start doing this as well, like ditch this slow, eff slow low effort type of cardio training that's not applicable to a wrestling match. That is one thing. The first common mistake, I believe, when it comes to conditioning for wrestling. So practical steps you can take yourself. Whether you're doing a treadmill, uh, circuit workout with wrestling specific exercises, whatever you want, don't focus on the length of the workout as much as you should focus on the intensity. The intensity is the important part. Like just a circuit of ta a Tabata workout, for example. Uh, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Like during those 20 seconds, go all out. Give it all you got. Or a circuit format with 3 minutes activity, 30 seconds rest. Go all out during those 3 minutes. It is much more important to do this than the lengthy style of training that we talked about. So that is the first mistake. And the second mistake, 
this is gonna sound very general, very cliche, but I mean, it's often those things that are gonna give you results. It's not training hard enough during an endurance session, a conditioning session. You see, it is a law of biology that an organism needs to experience a different stimulus if it is to grow. If an organism experiences the same kind of stimulus all the time, it's not going to grow from it. Your body works the same way, both physically and psychologically. If you do the same thing over and over again, you can't expect a change. What does this have to do with endurance training, you ask? Well, if you don't push yourself hard enough every single freaking session, your body is not going to change. It's not going to adapt. And this adaptation is both physically and psychologically. Both of them have to happen. Like, if you can make every single training session, endurance training session, a freaking hell on earth, you will get this psychological advantage. And this will help you tremendously in wrestling. Like, just this psychological advantage. I've seen, I've seen well-conditioned wrestlers winning over skilled wrestlers because they have this. They are willing to go into deep waters while their opponents want to stay there and be passive just play it out you know this psychological advantage is everything it will take you to higher levels that you ever imagined possible in combine this with like a skilled approach a good skill set and a good psychological advantage then you have a killer wrestler and i mean when you get to a certain level right now you might be finding success in those national type of championships maybe you're a collegiate wrestler you're winning against some guys but you will get to a certain level, like in the world stage, when you're up against the freaking Russians. The people from the Caucasus, Dagestan, Chechnya, and those places, their wrestling is in their blood. They are straight up killers. They will not be nice to you. When you wrestle with them, they will want to take your soul. You better be physically prepared against them. They will show you no mercy. Some of those people, they are like from war torn areas. Like they have experienced war. And that is the worst thing a human being can experience when you've experienced that you're not afraid of anything anymore it gives your life meaning like you start taking things seriously those guys they have experienced that and i mean this is not a this is combat it's a combat sport it's not like you're playing tennis or playing soccer it's very physical emotions get involved sometimes like you never know if your opponent might get so tense he he, he might slap you in the middle of the match punch you in the face like all of these things, keep it in mind when you're doing conditioning. You need to toughen yourself up with your conditioning. It can't be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. So train hard when you're doing the endurance. I know it sounds simple. I know you hear it, hear it everywhere. I mean, it even applies to myself. I even apply this to myself. Like, I need to work on those areas. I'm not saying I'm from freaking... Like, do you know what I mean? It's, you should apply everyone needs this. It's a tip that everyone needs. Train hard enough. You never... You might think you're training hard. I might think I'm working hard on some things, but you never know. You can always do better. Always. You should always remain humble in this area. You should always be skeptical about you not training hard enough. I believe that is the, a good ingredient to success when it comes to athletes, sports. And some people, they delude themselves. They are thinking they are training harder than they actually are and... Then they go to a wrestling match. I see this happen all the time and they experience a 0-10 humiliation against a guy that has worked hard the previous season. And then there's only two outcomes after a thing like this. Either they quit the sport or they start doing some soul searching, analyze themselves and come back better than ever. Start taking things more seriously. The third mistake I would say is being too caught up in, caught up in specificity. When it comes to conditioning or even not being specific enough. We're going to discuss that too. You see, functional training is a very... It's a term that's being thrown around here and there in the strength and conditioning community. We have trainers who want to say, oh, this is the best functional training that you should do. Like, they bore their athletes to death with those freaking mazes that you have to build in the facility. Like, do a box jump there and then run around this cone right here. Pick up this medicine ball, throw it backwards... Uh, do this thing here, like all of those fancy terms, like it requires two hours of uh, explanation and then the athlete has to learn the exact uh, angles and stuff on the exercise and all of that, like it's not practical. Sure, it might have some functional benefits, functional training, it might have it, but if it's not practically applied, if you can't explain it fast enough to to a wrestler who already has a short like time frame, 
of doing things, you've already lost there. Like, first of all, functional. what's more functional than wrestling itself? An athlete needs, and a wrestler needs to prioritize his wrestling. Like, that's just the truth of it. Anything else is supplemental. If you cannot take your fancy workout and make it practical, simplified for the wrestler to perform, then it's useless. I mean, sure, yeah, I explain a lot of power training, a lot of plyometric training but I, in my channel, but I try to make it as simple as I possibly can. If something is too complex, I don't want to uh, bore my wrestling athletes to death like explaining it to them. They're not going to even have the enthusiasm to do it in the first place. You need to earn the athlete's trust first. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of charlatans out there in the strength and conditioning community, and that's just the truth of it. Like, buy my program here and you'll become the best athlete in the world. Like, they want to show all the graphs and all the fancy stuff and all of this, like... Make it so complex that it almost seems credible. Because we're, sometimes we're stupid. When something seems complex enough, we think that it equals to credibility. And that's just not the truth of it. A lot of high-level athletes, they can take a, an idea, simplify it, and just stick to it with dedication. Like consistency, if you will. They never break it. That's the, that's the secret to their success. Instead of just going from one complex thing to another, oh, it doesn't work, leave it there, then go to another, then go to another. That's, not gonna, that's a recipe for disaster. It needs to be practical. And I mean, on the other end of the spectrum, you have athletes who are just not training wrestling-specific conditioning at all, like doing a similar to the first mistake that I talked about, like sitting on an exercise bike the whole freaking session, 60 minutes straight. You're not going to sit on an exercise bike in a wrestling match, right? You need to make it specific to wrestling in a way. So would it not be better to make a circuit of like different exercises? You see, endurance training, it's, it doesn't have to be just endurance. It could be endurance training and technique training at the same time. For example, say you want to work on your hip thrust, like I explained in my other videos. You can do a throwing dummy in one endurance training circuit session. You could do battle ropes to better your hand fighting. There is a lot of things you can do in endurance training that also aids your wrestling. And this is, this is one advantage of circuit training. I mean, also, you can, do, you, can, you can go running if that's what you're enthusiastic about. I mean, running is not the most wrestling-specific thing in the world, but if you have fun doing it, if you're willing to... If you're able to exert yourself while doing it, setting goals like... Okay, I'm going to run this specific distance in this specific time frame now and beat it the next time. If that's what you're enthusiastic about, you have an advantage. You can do that as well. As long as you're working hard and having this psychological advantage, whatever you do is fine. As long as you, your heart gets pumping, like it's beating. So my tip when it comes to this is don't get too caught up in this functional type of specific type of training and don't get like too far away from that either. You need to go somewhere in the middle. The important part is that you can have a psychological and a physical advantage. Get your endurance up and get your mental toughness up. That should be the only purpose when it comes to it. That's it. Thanks for watching.